Chimera is one of our newest enemy AIs in God of War 3. Based off of Greek mythology, it's, it's part lion, part goat, part snake. I first was given the task to design the Chimera back in 2005 for the God of War 2 um, PlayStation 2 video game. After doing the research online and just reading up on the character, I started to do sketches. I was doing just whatever ideas I can think of, of course keeping with those three heads, the snake and the lion and the goat. I had fun, you know, just kind of playing around with ideas. I did one where a goat's head emerged from his mouth. It's the best to just kind of give him as many ideas, no matter how crazy they are. Now you start finding the range, and eventually that's how you can find the final design. This is the final approved version. I came up with the idea, what if they're almost like on top of each other? so that the character, when you first see it, it would be on all fours on the ground, and what you would see would be the goat's head. Eventually, the chimera stands up, and it's kind of a reveal of like the lion. I kind of was thinking in my own head, like the personality of this chimera, and I would think that the lion and the goat actually don't get along, <laughs> and they're fighting for dominance, for position, like the goat wants to be on all fours and just you know, wants the lion to eat dirt and stare only at the ground. The lion wants to, you know, stand up and the goat just to look at the sky. It doesn't necessarily come through in the game, but these are the kind of things we think of as concept designers to help us design a real character rather than just a cool looking thing. So it starts with the concept. That was tough. We pulled it off. Taking that from 2D to 3D, though, there definitely needed to be some adjustments because we're only seeing them in a couple angles in 2D. 3D, we had to like, you know, make some adjustments, make sure that he reads well in the game. I received concept art from Andy Park for the Chimera, and they gave me about four to six weeks, I'd say, to model and texture the character. Here is the Chimera in ZBrush. We put him in the T-pose and start sculpting. The key thing is just usually the silhouette, like when it's small and how it reads. And those are the things we work out early on. And then it's just a matter of details and making the texture look interesting when you're closer up. One of the areas that's kind of cool is the transition from the lion body to the snake body. And by doing that, we just ran scales like a snake up through his torso. And it's kind of fun to sculpt these transitions and make them look natural. The horns, I really like working on these. The reference for this is a combination of what Andy drew and I went and looked on like mountain goats and other goats in wildlife and just looked at the horn and, and just the texture and the shapes that are in some of them. Here's the Chimera and Maya with everything on. We use alpha to make the polygons look transparent where the hair would be. In Maya for us, it doesn't display because of the type of alpha we use. You can see it's kind of jacked, but in game, it looks correct. You can see the material of the snake and his colors of the snake are blue and yellow, and the yellow helps like integrate the colors of the chimera, which are also yellow. Some of the things we had to get to pop out on this character were like his hooves and his nails and the horns. It's another thing, at first they weren't real shiny, and then as we started playing it, when we made them a little shinier, they really stood out. Making like the snake shinier and the horn shinier, it helps those elements when they're on screen read a little better. I really like um, how unique he is, and I definitely think he's one of the coolest game, or characters in our game. Uh, in the end, when at first I was a little skeptical, but I really like how he turned out. One of the things that we wanted to do with the Chimera is we wanted to make him somewhat of kind of like a stalker. It's the lion, and the lion part of him and the snake part of him is kind of stalking his prey. In combat design, one of the challenges for the Chimera is communicating to the player which mode he's in. In, in term, what I mean by mode is like snake, lion, goat. So we want to make sure the player knows exactly that personality. So when you see him first come up, I mean, you see the snake's kind of prevalent. Um, you see the lion for a little bit, but now he's down on all fours. The snake, he's got the red eyes, he's kind of stalking you. So here Kratos chops off the snake tail and it immediately puts him into the lion mode. And the first thing the lion does is want to shoot fire. This is pretty much what the lion does. He'll try to slash Kratos sometimes if he's in the vicinity. So now that he's a lion, he's just like this non-stop fire-breathing explosion beast. So now I killed the lion and now the goat immediately wants to start ramming me. 
and then once he does that, he'll try to get away because, you know, this is the last phase of the character. He'll ram you and then try to evade back, and then he'll shoot some fire along the ground. The goat's fire attack is different than the lion's because he wants to keep you away. So the Chimera, he's pretty intimidating. The biggest tip I could give someone who's playing against him is to use the Cestus or the Gauntlets, because he might have trouble blocking that, and he won't have a counter for that, so that's probably your best bet. At the start, the Chimera was kind of confusing, actually. We had a lot of time to discuss what it was going to be and how it would move and everything like that, but there were even parts of it where we, we discussed it, and, and the character was female, and I don't think anybody even realized at the time that there was a male lion head on it. And so there were, there were conflicting things about the character. And then on top of that, we knew we wanted to utilize all three of these heads, which is tricky. You kind of have to keep its motion similar, but then trying to incorporate different personalities of the individual heads was, was a little tougher. The first phase of the Chimera is actually less aggressive than the rest, and I think that's why they feel differently. Then once you go to the other phases, especially the lion, I think, she, even though she looks like a male lion, uh, she looks a little more frantic and, you know, the fire attack is a little bit wilder, the, the claw swipes are wild. That does feel different, I think, than the actual snake face. Its movement is, is, is different for, for the stages, but the personality is still this kind of aggressive and strange mythological looking beast. The idea was that if you beat the character up enough over time that it would get defensive and it would go to this downward goat stance and, and basically try to stay away from the player. There was a lot of videos I looked at, but in the end they didn't really apply. It's a quadruped who doesn't necessarily move like a quadruped. I mean, the movement isn't like a goat at all, and it's hopping around and doing all sorts of crazy stuff. The idea behind the Chimera, I think, originally was a good process because we had the designers who weren't coming up with the motion. They were coming up with the purpose. And so we would get told that, hey, we need, we need to kill these three heads off somehow. And it's up to the animators to basically decide what that motion is. And so, you know, we can make it look as cool as possible with motion in mind, and the designers can go back and say, okay, well, we need these frames to make it feel good. Designing a character like Chimera where, you know, a lot of thought is put into it and a lot of even your own ideas kind of came through in the characters, definitely very rewarding, especially since it's been a four-year process of finally being realized in the game. Once the animators got a hold of it and animated it, I thought he was one of the coolest characters in the game. The concept went really well. Getting the concept and turning it into 3D went really well. The animators just ran with this thing. The combat design worked out really well. So that's been something that wasn't quite expected because usually there's at least a couple of iterations and this guy worked out really well from the get-go. Thank you.